coming back. And there's a there's a loyalty card that goes along with it, but stopping there, I'm gonna let Jeff kind of take it from there. Jeff, thanks again for coming. Thank you. Pleasure. And uh yes. always good being here. Um, thank you. I have to say I do a lot of these and and, and uh, coming here in particular, it just seems to be whether it's it's the way that they do business, I suspect, uh, the way their interaction with their with, with the customers, with you guys. Uh, they, they pull a lot of people into these, and it's always a, a pleasure to, to speak here. Uh, I'm going to go over a, a little bit, not, not just about, you know, just the, the, the credit cards, because we, we do a lot more with our system, but just about uh, recognizing emerging trends and capitalizing on them. We're going to cover five topics, if this works. We turn it on. We're going to cover five topics. We're going to cover why credit cards, and why now, in other words, you know, they've been around for a long time. Why, why, are, we, why are we, all of a sudden, is, is it, you know, sort of an emergency in our industry that we, we need to do this? Being proactive as opposed to being reactive. In other words, do we wait? Or do we, or do we, or we decide to do it currently? Now that we're proactive, how many, how many machines should I convert? In other words, you've got a big store, you're looking at substantial investment, you want to make sure that you put enough machines, you know, do, do enough machines that, that your customers are able to use their credit cards. And then rates, and how to get over the mental block. So none of us like to see something going out again, you know, where we're battling utilities, and now we have to take a piece of our of our money and pay to the credit card companies, you know, the demons up there. And then what to look for in a credit card system. So first, why credit cards? Why debit cards? Why now? We all know that, that we can use our credit card just about everywhere we go, from fast food stores to airline parking tickets. Parking tickets. I pay for those too. Uh, you know, uh, ticket sales. You know, you can just park your car now. You can use a credit card reader. There's usually a kiosk. You know, you pay for your parking ticket with a credit card. Yeah, but no. I was going to say my, my daughter bought a new Monopoly game. Yeah. It's credit cards. You Is it? You don't have the bank anymore. On, on the Newman Monopoly game. You've got a little credit card reader and everybody has a credit card. And everybody says Visa on the front. They're probably, they're probably and I mean, yeah, you got to put that on your presentation. That, that's I good. couldn't believe it the other day when I was playing it. That's very funny. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, in uh, entertainment and vending, so if, if you travel a lot, as, as many of us do, you go into the airports and <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of the, the, the truck stops and stuff, you're going to see them on, on vending machines. You'll see them on everyone pretty, pretty much has a red box in their town. You'll see credit card readers on, on those items. Um, of course, we all know about gasoline, uh, convenience stores, and uh, I don't think any of us, probably in this room, uh, would go up to, to a gas station that doesn't have a credit card reader on it and, uh, and buy our gas. It's just become too convenient. And it wasn't really even that many years ago that, that, that option wasn't available. You were, you were you had to go in the store and they might run a slip for you, but as, as it you know, became on, on, the, uh, on the gas pumps, the, 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 the gas stations that didn't invest in that technology, you know, they, they didn't last. And, and our industry is no different. You know, if, if we don't invest in these technologies, you know, we're going to be that gas station. You know, they ended up having weeds coming up through through the cracks in, in the parking lot. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I went. It, it's always just surprising to me some of the gas stations that, 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 that still don't take credit cards. And I will pull into those places as a sign on, on might have a sign on the pump that says "Go inside to pay." Yeah. And it probably. Faster for me to go inside and pay than it is for me to get back in my car and drive across the street or a block up the road to the one where you can pay on the pump. But I always get back in my car and I drive away. And most of them are aggravated, you know, that they haven't taken that step yet, and I got to go inside and pay. Um, there are some statistics here. They're they're really staggering. You have to get an idea of of just how prevalent credit cards are in this country. So, 80% of consumers have a, have a debit card, while 78% have a credit card. Well, 21 percent have a contactless card. In other words, those are the cards you just tap on the reader. They're, they're, they're not the swipe style. Student population, it's a big one. You think about that. You, you, need, you happen to be near a university? Think about how they want to pay. They, they don't want to use the quarters. A lot of credit card charges in the country. So you think that maybe this is how we like to pay. We, we know that we like to pay that way. So, so the thing is, 
do our customers like to? Are, 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 they, are they also wanting to come into your laundromat and not just have them use coins? They want to be able to come in and swipe their credit card just like they do everywhere else. That's why these numbers are so big, because they work. Do you, do you know that if, if, if you were to take all the credit cards issued annually in the United States, stack them top of each other 70 miles into space to give you an idea of the amount of plastic that we print out in this country. It's a lot of cards, and those are your customers. One of the benefits you know, that, that we like to talk about is that we don't want you to get rid of your coin. We know the coin is important. We know that not everyone is going to go this direction. You're going to have uh, people that, that aren't funded, that don't have credit cards. We're going to have uh, you know, maybe elderly who uh, just don't believe in them. You know, so so we don't want to ever say get rid of rid of coin. You know, we were before we before we were in this industry. That's automatic with manufactured card systems. We had one of the first card systems on the market. And Brian talks about those those first you know ninety stores that went in twenty years ago. You know, well, we manufactured a lot of those systems. But when we developed this system uh, four years ago, this was our second generation. We had a credit card system uh, about twelve years ago. It was our first generation one out. We were the first company to ever do this. We always believed in every system we've ever developed. They have the capability of handling coin, handling credit cards, handling loyalty cards. We need to enable our customers to pay the way that they want to pay, not the way that we want them to pay. So, I want to talk about being proactive as opposed to being reactive. So, a, a proactive consumer, or in your point, you know, consumer, uh, someone who is, is a business owner, is someone who, who can see an industry trend. In other words, we recognize that something <laughs> needs to happen. We, we, we see that you know credit cards are coming in, you're coming to these meetings, you're, you're, you're here because, because education is important to you. We talk about a lot of the features on these machines, we talk about you know, lower water levels, and we, we enact on them when we know, you know they're emerging, as opposed to a reactive person. That reactive person will take something after you know, it's been proven, and then <laughs> Well, we'll put it in, but maybe that time is too late. I mean, maybe you've already lost market share. So as an example, we have Joe's Laundry, and we have Laundry Land. Now, all things made the same. These laundromats are, are, are in similar areas. They're in similar markets. They, they keep up on their, their equipment. And <coughs> and Laundry Land here, he just thinks it's good. things are just going to keep on going. The coins are fine. Joe's Laundry, however, has come to these seminars... He's spoken to his distributor. He's listened to Brian Wallace, who's, who's, who's you know, up on the industry trends. And he says, I'm, I'm going to take a jump on this. You know, I can feel it, too. You know, you know someone who's, who is uh, proactive, you kind of sense it. You know, you know that, 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 thing, that the time is right. And you act on it. So you put your credit cards in. You mark it. Important. Let people know. You put credit cards in. You don't let them know. You don't get up there on Facebook. Let people know that you're, you're, you're doing this, you've made this big investment. They're not going to come to your store. The same thing, you can't just expect your customers to walk through anymore. So you let them know that you have these technologies, whether it's the big washers, whether it's uh, the, the higher extract times, whether it's the credit card system. Grand opening. Steal a few more customers. See, Laundry Land, he's still in denial. He's decided that things are still going to be okay, but now he's eroding, he's eroding his customer base. And as he erodes his customer base, he has less money to invest. It's what we like to see. It's what we want to see our competition become. I want to see them come to grade out laundromat. We know there's a lot of them. I think that last time I was in, in here, not the show, the one before, but, but uh, either Brian or Tom said that there are, are estimated at least 10,000 poorly run laundromats in the United States. Those are the people who are not proactive thinkers. They just think that they take all the quarters and put them in their pocket and, and, and not invest in, in technology. Because as technology comes and as technology changes, we need to invest in our laundromats just in the same way that every other business does. Eventually, we're going to have our favorite thing for sale. <coughs> now, what your next laundry? This becomes not your competition any longer. It becomes your opportunity. It's the little things. I think we all know that. I think that there's no one in here that isn't a prudent investor. So, probably the topic that I'd like to least speak about is credit card rates. 
and how to get over the, the mental block of them. It's really hard for everyone. There, there isn't one person I speak to ever who doesn't, who doesn't bring up the question, you know, how much of my money am I, am I going to lose? And I think that if we understand how credit cards work, that there, there, there's a real um, emotional detachment that happens when you're not handling your, your coin. We are, we are attached to our money. We feel it tactically leaving our hands. And if we use a credit card and we remove that, we, we opt to spend more money on the things we want to spend it on, as opposed to, you know, I, I'm a store owner too, so, so I, I watch what people do in my store. I, I want to, I want to speak, you know, from a, from an empowered standpoint when I come and speak to you guys because I'm not going to fool any of you. You know, we, we know how, how people act. I, I know that I see the people. They go to the change machine. They get up just what they want. They have their little stack of quarters in their hand for their dryers. You know, they want to put in exactly you know a dollar seventy five to start their machine. Whether it's going to dry their clothes or not, whether they jam that machine full of, of, of their jeans as opposed to their their towels. That little pile is what they want to spend. So I've done a couple of examples here, just so you can see it visually of, of how a credit card customer might react as, part, as opposed to a coin customer. And the coin customer is putting in exactly what they have in their hand, where if you if you press our up button, which we have on our dryers to get to the, to the amount of money that you want to spend, that only takes a few more times, where we have the, the, the 24 minutes, which will soon, as this goes by, be 36. You know that the, the 36 to 40 minutes is probably, you know, about what I, at least my customers spend. If they spend just one more push on that reader, the amount, the difference by percentage is 17%. This is what credit card people do. I, I, I was just talking about it the other day at the, at, at the show, and then I went on to my software to show somebody, you know, my, my location, and, and I, I pointed out that, look, if somebody used a credit card, two, two dryers at, at 275 each, we only have to see the coin ones because we, because we show all the data on our, in our software. We're worth two dollars. It was seventy-five cents, and yet it's, it's probably the same load of laundry because we've removed the, the emotional attachment to, to spending the money. People tend to dry what they feel is going to dry their clothes as opposed to what they're spending out of their hand. Now, if they happen to bump that just one quarter, a seventeen percent increase becomes a thirty-three percent increase. So, little bits when you're on small ticket, a little bit really in terms of percentage, is a large amount of percentage. So when we're looking at a credit card rate, it's offset largely by how you can increase your bottom line. And I'm not going to tell you that every customer is going to do it, because they aren't, you know, that make a liar out of me. But this is how people react. I watch it over and over. I mean, I see people ridiculous amounts of time on, on, on their dryers. You know, they, they, hit, they hit that button and they're like, swipe their credit card and starts the machine. You see the similar thing on a, on a washer. We find that your customers come in, they take all their clothes, they jam all into one machine, and you're like, gosh, they should really split that between a couple machines, you know, separate your whites out. You know, they're trying to save money, but, but what, we, what we know they really want is they really want to separate their clothes out and, uh, and get in a couple machines. So, come in, stuff in, go between two machines, as opposed to one. When you turn that $5 machine to six fifty. Now that five dollar machine might also maybe they prefer to use your bigger machine. That might be a, a seven dollar machine, or they could choose choose the price modifiers now. So what we find is that, that more often when we when we have a, a credit card swipe, they're going to come to this machine, they're going to come over here and hit the soil level, and they're going to thing right up to the heavy that we've removed that quote, emotional attachment of the exact amount of coins they have in their hands. They want to dump in their machines. They're going to simply buy what they want to buy, not according. to was lying in their hand with their little cup, maybe they had their styrofoam cup, but they got just the right amount of money and they're figuring out how not to go back to your change machine. So when we do that modifier, we can take a 30% increase, and become the 50% sales increase. And the reason why I do this is because, you know, the first time that I did it, you know, I was like, oh yeah, you know, quarter year, I, we can make it the 5%. But it's when, it's when you realize that a quarter in relationship to each year event price is, is a large percentage. The next thing is, is about how many machines should you convert, and that is uh, it's another tough subject because you know it's an investment on your part, and it's an investment in technology. Uh, we all you know would like our equipment to go on forever and ever and never have to you know reinvest in them. We we know that we're, we're in an industry that that is uh, completely driven by equipment, and um, what's important is is that when it comes to credit cards, you give your customers 
the ability to actually use them in your store. You see, you see if, if we decide that we're going to put them on our two big machines, we really haven't done anyone any good. We put them on our two big machines, we think, well, you know, those are the ones that have been for $10. Of course I want them on those ones. I'm tired of emptying my money boxes. You know, but if that customer comes in and you've advertised, you take credit cards, they come in, those machines are being used, they're like, well, well where can I use my credit cards? You know, there, there's a reason why stores put so much equipment in. It isn't for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's for Saturday and Sunday. It's for your busy days. That's when they're being used. It's when every machine gets used. It's no different for credit cards. If, if your customers come in with the expectation to be able to use a credit card, and it's not on all your machines, and you, and you still drive them back to the change machine, the next time they come in, they're going to come in, and they're, and they're going to bring the coin with them. You've taken away what you were trying to give them. So it's important that you put them on enough machines. You know, we believe in full store conversions. We have a couple people here who have done uh, most of their store, if not all of their store, and those 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 customers know that uh, they, they made the right choice. You know, if, if we have, you know, as, as an example here, if we have uh, the toll booth, and then these these are the lines here where, 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 where we have the, the the easy pass, which we have in uh, in our area of the world, so you can go through the line faster. And yet, if you haven't put them on enough booths, and that has a line at it, well, do you want the convenience of that? Or are you going to go through next time? Because what you really want, you want the short line. That's what your customers want. They want to be able to come in and move through your store quickly. In other, in other words, when we give people a wider range of options to choose from, we can increase our bottom line. Now, now, now we've evened out our flow in our stores. Now we can process more people. If, if, if we do partial stores, put, put, the, put the equipment on your slower machines. You don't want your, your coin customers to come into your store and utilize those credit card machines. So, so if you can't do a whole store, put them on, 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 your, middle, on your middle dryers. Put them on uh, of, of your uh, smaller machines. Put them on the, the ones that are least used. Bring those people over to those machines. Cause we, cause we know as a manufacturer that you may not be able to do your whole store. But we also know as a manufacturer that it's important that everyone in this room and in this industry recognizes that this, this technology is here. It's here to stay. And uh, we, we're, we're seeing just a tremendous growth in the amount of phone calls that, that we received from, from three to four years ago where we received a couple of week. You know, we're, we're receiving you know, upwards of a dozen calls a day about this. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that everyone needs to, to know. Like Brian said, it, it was the talk of the last clean show. It's going to be the big time talk of the, of the next clean show. We have competitors now. We were the first ones to introduce this technology in the industry. And, uh, and, and the competition is a good thing, really, because it... it, it, it is a uh, uh, it justifies you know the, the the process essentially. So once again, I make up these funny slides here. But can you imagine? If you went to McDonald's, said credit cards accepted for most items. But by not putting on enough machines, that's essentially what we're saying. We're saying that you know use it here, but don't use it here. Wash your clothes but when you come up with your dryer. We're not going to have a place where you use your credit card on it. Or <laughs> credit cards are kept on everything but the french fries. You know, it's, it's important. You know, this is this big investment. I would rather see everyone here take some more time, take another year, whatever it takes, to, to, to make the investment right as opposed to, to investing you know, early and not doing it correctly. Because we want it to work for you as a, as a, as a, as a uh, store owner. We want you to work for your customers. We want to use it for work well for us as a, uh, as a manufacturer. The worst thing that can happen for us is for blogs to get out that I put it on a couple machines and lo and behold it didn't work. It's no surprise. You know, we know that and it's our job to educate you as to, as, as to why it, you need to put enough you know, readers on your machines. As far as what to look for in a credit card system, because we're going to brag on our system, um, it's important that it takes all forms of payment. In other <coughs> words, you can take uh, the, the loyalty cards, credit cards, we tally all the coin. In other words, it becomes a complete management tool for your laundromat. We can uh, have full reporting. We'll let you know when your money boxes are overflowing because we tally all the coin. Um, use, use the cards for wash, dry, fold. Don't, don't give your uh, employees the opportunity to steal from you any longer. I'm a laundry owner. I do a lot of wash, dry, fold. I understand about the theft. I was being robbed blind myself. And uh, when you take that power away of, of, of using a card to start your machines, yeah, I'm sure there's always ways around stealing with wash, wash, dry, fold, but you sure do reduce it. And we get call after call 
from people after they put it in. They're they like, Jeff, you were right. They were stealing from me. It was my best friend. You know, it was, uh, it was my brother. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Do you think you can trust family to empty your machines? <coughs> you can't. You just can't. And, and, and it's, it's sad, but it's, it's probably the one thing that ties us to our laundromats is, is, is our, our inability to really know what's coming in them, you know, unless we're emptying them ourselves. I mean, we can go and these have reports in them, but no one's going to stand here in front of this machine and pull a report up. I know they aren't, because I don't do it because it's just too much work. I mean, if you, if you get a network store, you could do that and, and align to the great network system where you can go in and you get all those reports because they also know that it's important to know what's coming into your machine. Every other business, we have point of sale systems, right? No one's just running money into a little cash register and throwing it in there thinking that, that their employees aren't going to steal from, from them. There's a reason why we have point of sale. We don't want to be tied to our money. I mean, we want to be tied to it, for sure. <laughs> but we don't want to be tied to, to the collection all the time. You want to take vacations. I mean, I take my family for three weeks, you know, on vacation. I know it's coming in my store. And get my money boxes for me, please. Take it to the bank. I'm going to tell you that they're supposed to be, you know, you know, $1,000 and $20 and 25 cents coming out of those money boxes. And that better be what's getting deposited into my account. Now, that only works really if you do a full store conversion, because you'll, you'll know, you know every money box. But I'm just telling you that the, that the capability of what we can do in the system is more than credit cards. So you so say your investment in this is more than an investment in just credit cards. It's an overall money management tool. So another thing is just is understanding where credit cards are going. Because credit cards are no longer going to be just what you, know, you commonly know as the MagStripe card. MagStripes have pretty much been phased out in every country around the world except, except for uh, North America. Uh, Canada is pretty much phasing them out, too. <coughs> They've gone into what's called uh, chip and pin. In other words, there's a smart chip on the card. You travel to Europe at all. Uh, they, I think they're uh, disallowing the use of MagStripe in, in, uh, in the European Union pretty soon. So you have to get a, a special card now if you're going to travel. It has a chip in it, and you enter a little pin number every time you use it. Uh, in the United States, we're going a couple different ways. We're going to RFID. <coughs> we're going to mobile payments. You've probably heard about it a lot uh, on the news. Uh, that's NFC or near field communication. In other words, phone payments. So you use your phone under our reader here, place your phone in front of it, and it makes the payment. That technology is here now. I mean, if Google puts it out. We know where Google is going. Um, uh, you know, ISIS, <coughs> consortium of T Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T, along with Verifone. So you think those guys, arch rivals in the industry, decide they're going to do NFC readers? This technology is here. You can just see the youth, you know, loading their credit cards on their phone and starting payments. What we don't want to do is sell you a system where you spent you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for you to find this obsolete in just a few years. Because even though the max rate may be around, it doesn't mean that everyone's going to carry it. So our systems are able to handle those payments. The contactless RFID cards. I was sitting uh, last night uh, having dinner, and the guy sitting next to me was getting ready to pay, and I looked down on his card. He's got a little symbol on there, so it's a little... Uh, like a round symbol means, it means uh, contactless. And I look at his card, and he's got the contactless symbol on it. And if you look through your wallet, you might find that on your card, you'll have that little symbol. That means you can go up to the reader, and you just tap it, and it makes payment. So that's, that's, that technology is here and now. So our readers it, it accept that kind of payment as well. I'm sure your, your data is encrypted. It's important. I think that nobody's doing credit cards who isn't doing that. But just to, you know, as a company, that we have to stay up with PCI compliance. It's, uh, it's an industry standard. Want to do any on-site programming? In other words, everything is loaded on the cloud, so you, you don't you think you're not tied to your, your your PC in the store. You 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 want to be able to operate this like like any other modern system does. You can go on any computer anywhere and, and get your your critical data. So, you know, in, in the past, and maybe some of you don't know this, but you know. There's a lot of work setting up stores. You have to go in and configure all the machines. Everything's done on the web. You just turn your machines on, and it loads all the data for you. Once again, no, no on-site PC. I know everyone you know, will ask me over and over again, don't you have something there that, that does the processing? <coughs> the processing is not done in your store. Every one of these units are all run individually. They all go Bluetooth wirelessly directly up the Internet, and everything is handled on our servers. So you don't need to worry about... Um, backing up your, your computers. You don't need to worry about obsolete operating systems. You don't need to worry about um, you know, viruses and, and all the horrible things that happen by having a PC on site. We made those systems for years, and they are just not the way to go. And then we decided to, to design the system. We said, no more of that. We're going to the cloud. Everything's going to be hosted there. 
and it makes it really, really easy for you because the last thing you want to do as an operator is to, de to deal with a crashed hard drive. There's just nothing worse. We've done so many times, oh, my stuff. And then we're like, well, what if I just put your backup in? I never did a backup. You know, I mean, who does a backup, really? I mean, who's back to their computer at home? You know, it's just, we like to think this stuff's going to run forever, but it doesn't. So that's how we designed then the loyalty card they're talking about. And using the loyalty card for promotions, I think there's Bruce here. Bruce, you can talk a little bit about that. He's, he's probably our best promoter. You know. Well, what we did when we uh, first got the system, we wanted to promote it. We also wanted to attract new people. So we had a mailing list off the internet of um, all the people who read it within 14 miles of our store. And... Um, we ordered these cards with our logo on it, and uh, we sent around uh, 4,000 of these cards out. Uh, we put a value of uh, $10.50 on each card. So when a, uh, a renter got one of these cards, they come in and they could start any one of our machines, no matter how big it was. Um, they told me when I mailed these out, but on most mailings, you get a real small uh, return rate. Uh, we ended up getting a 20% return rate on this. So, uh, yeah, we gave away some free laundry. But we also got a lot of people in our store who didn't even know we were on that side of town or where we were even there. And, uh, you got better since 1980, right? That's right. And we had people in our town that didn't, uh, that never come to our side of town, didn't know we were there. So we got them in the store, um, and then um, got them coming back. We still so. pass out flyers. Mm -hmm. We've been there six years, but we still pass them out. It's, it's really amazing. I, I suffer in the same situation that you do, where you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a small town. I have only 6,000 people, and we have a, com a competitor. They happen to be the better location. I have a nicer store. I always think, goodness gracious, my store is so much nicer than it is. It's one of those 10,000 stores that I was talking about earlier. That it's one of those dumps, you know, disgusting store. You know, the one by McDonald's and, 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 and uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and I'm just a little bit out of town. And I, I try to run a top-notch uh, operation. People, I never knew you were here. I'm a town of 6,000 people. Give me a break. How do you, how do you know me not I'm not here? So the same thing. I started handing the cards out. I'm like, you know what? Let's see, you know, I did because I listened to you. How it worked for you? I, I tried mailers before. The return on mailers was just abysmal. Yeah. I couldn't even believe it. Mm -hmm. As soon as I did the cards, man, that was money in people's hands. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm from last year to this year, I'm up 20 percent. You know, so yeah, it's money. It's play money. It's your utilities. You know, it's cost you a little bit. But a, a, as a way to market your store, it, it's really hard to market a lot. Right? We all know that. It's just so difficult. Same with I own a car wash too. It's, it's just the difficult businesses to market. So. The card just really gives you that opportunity. I think that, Mark, I, th I think that you're on the same road with that. You know, use the cards to your advantage, and uh, and they they, they 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 and they will work for you. We give a small list when they hit hundred dollars that they get to choose from. Mm -hmm. That's free. You know, right. Like Twenty pounds of fluffy bowl, or use one big washers for free, or whatever. It's just a small list, and they, they save a lot of confidence on them. They know what they get. Right. So, Oh, you'll learn. okay. We don't get too many people with credit cards. Well, you know, you know, this won't be for everyone. Right. You know, so we, get, we get about four or five people a year maybe using credit cards. Right. We won't want to use them anyway. Right. right. So, so you know, and, and that that'll be a discussion you would have with your distributor. You know, you know, I, I don't think that that Mike would sell anything to, in, in any area that, that doesn't warrant it. Right. Nobody wants right. to see you get hurt by your business. Right. His job is to make sure that you are successful as a business owner and if it's the wrong choice, he's not going to sell and us as a manufacturer, we don't want to see you do it either. We're not, we're not right. greedy to take your money just so that you cannot succeed. There are you know, five and a half million coin operating uh, machines in the United States. There's plenty to go around. We want to make sure that, that you make the wisest and smartest investment and for a lot of you, it's going to be putting, for credit, putting in credit card systems. For some of you, it isn't. Right. But I have to tell you, with, with that said, if you do drop off laundry, we have locations in rural Vermont where they do very little on credit cards too. A lot of farmers up there, and that's not what they, they don't even want to hear the word credit card. You know, it's, it's, it's a dirty word. But they'll, they'll do camp laundry or something like that. And we had a guy put in just so he could do his camp laundry. 
got his son was stealing from him. 20% of all the quarters putting in this big five gallon bucket he brought in every night. He would shut down at 9 o'clock at night, and run his machines on quarters all night long. 20% less quarters going to his machines to start them. And his son, and his son was the one who told him to put it in. So, you know, and then, then he calls me up on the way here when, I, when I was, I'm driving to, to the airport, and he says, You know, Jeff, he says, I know that we're rural, but I get about 20% of my customers are using credit cards. So he put in for one reason, you know, to, 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 to deal with the drop of laundry and found that lo and behold, you know, all of his redneck friends, you know, all want to use a credit card too. And this is the beginning. He's like, every month I see a few more points going up on it, you know. It's just it's so much easier. You know, no one, who, who, who carries a checkbook with them anymore in this room? Anyone? Checkbook. Yeah, checkbook. Yeah. Okay, do you write, you write many of those? I mean, I mean, we don't want to be behind your line in the supermarket. You know? So what, what I'm saying is that, that think about the youth. Think about them. How much money do they carry in the wallet anymore? These are your customers. You know, they don't have any money. I don't wonder if they're even going to know what money is soon because they have a debit card. It's been given to them. If you are near campus and you're not putting this kind of technology, whether it's us or somebody else, you're making a mistake. These, these are, this is how they want to pay. And, and like I said, they're going to do it in the dorms. You give them a reason to come to your laundromat, make it easier, they'll do it. Because they might have a car system that laundry and, and that, that dorm has made it easy. Make it easy for them in your laundromat, and they're going to come there instead. Because every single area where we are, where there's, where there's a college campus nearby, are doing you know, upwards of 40% on credit cards. And they're seeing the numbers going up. They're, they're not seeing the reduction in their coin collections. That's what they'd hope for. Oh, my big machine, you know. It's always overflowing, you know. I, I, you know, three times a week I go to go, to, go there and empty them. Let's put this in and reduce collections. The good news was they started collecting three times a week. What they were seeing is, is that yeah, the coin went down a little bit, but the credit card went way up here. So, and these are real stories from our customers. Did you tell about the first store you ever put in? Did you mention that? Yet? Oh, yeah. Can I can you mention their name? A few, yeah. Okay. So the story we did, one of the first stores we did, the first story we did with these guys, and there it was it was almost. Two and a half years ago, <laughs> called the Sully Duck, and uh, went there and met all these guys for the first time. We saw it together and had a good time. And uh, um, his wife calls up a couple weeks ago and says, "Jeff, please tell me that these card numbers that are coming through can just get there on their own." You know, every, every one of our loyalty cards is, is a number they use for wash, dry, fold. It says, it says that, that no, you know, they don't just magically pop onto your onto the servers and and get there, a card that was swiped is a card that shows up in your, in your database. He says, my very best friend, going to church with her for 20 years, stealing from me. You know, got a store in Washington. Similar story. You know, she uh, wanted to put it into two stores. She, she's a strip mall owner. She does, does a lot of strip malls, and so she started putting laundromats in. Something happened with the whole running the sewage, and she, she had a budget overrun. Didn't put it in. Went to put her third <coughs> store in, put the whole system in. Had someone who was collecting those other two stores for a year, you know, in between, and uh, someone she knew and trusted, and uh, collecting the store. And she goes up to her, you know, after like a month of collecting, she didn't really get into the software and look at it for a while. And then she, and she's noticing that, you know, the numbers aren't driving. They bring in this amount of money. The software is saying this amount of money. She comes up to her and says, you know, we track all the revenue now. She said the woman turned white as a ghost and quit. I don't know what happened after that. Thousand dollars and more a week <laughs> out of that store. In other words, what about the other two stores she was collecting? Right. Someone's having a good payday. She's probably driving with a BMW. Right. She wasn't asking for any raises. <laughs> no, she wasn't. She was pretty happy. So you know, I, I don't think she pursued it in any legal way. I think just, just you know, they're, they're now doing the other two stores. So it's just, it's just, it's just knowing that, that that we can monitor our stores. You know, we're not not into the camera systems. Yeah, but, but, but we need to look at our money. We, we need to know that this is real money. The, 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 the <coughs> temptation to take is far too great. You've got a bucket of quarters, you're collecting them, you're going to go buy lunch. <coughs> lunch, you got away with it. Next thing you know, you're justifying you know, your rent. You know? <laughs> And it happens, right? I mean, I'm sure you've heard these stories. Yeah, you know, you it's so common. If you don't believe you have it's solid so partners, common. I mean, I can tell you hundreds of solid partners. <laughs> 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 I can tell you a lottery at our store. 
Oh, so we got a lot of money, and I still, but we trust where the dog. We pretty good, but we could still if we wanted to, because Tennessee lottery is easy to still stretch out. <laughs> I gotta say right now, I, I can keep care. up with them. So hundreds yeah. of stories of this family members blind. stealing from family members. And I, right. I've seen people it. honestly get in their head that they deserve. It. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right, right. They right. They <laughs> honestly <laughs> get in their head. That I work, I work hard for this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because he's on vacation, the guy collected the money. Says, you know, we have work for me. I'm going to make this big. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mark, yeah. Mark, you got that from the, uh, from the restaurant industry, which I was in also. The restaurant business, the doorman. Yeah. We'll start keeping a hundred dollars right every time. Mm -hmm. And we know that's why this point of sales is we, we try to do everything we can to track our money. Just because it's locked in here, right? Doesn't mean it can't be stolen. I mean, good night. <laughs> There's ways of even getting around that, of, of, of making little shoots, that, you know, to go to weird spots in your machines, and you know, I mean, and, so and, 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 in car wash, you said you have a service drunk a little bucket under there, let the money drop in the bucket or in a vacuum cleaner, and then come in and take it before. Just like those get so full, they start coming out. And the it's on the side of the washes. Yep. Well, another yeah. thing is, you know, we, we because we tally all the coin, we can actually send you an email, let you know where your money boxes are at, you know, let you know that they're overflowing, so you don't get that phone call. Yeah. Yes. So your technology, you still didn't go back with your technology as a net master, did you? You can use it with net master, but you, it's right. not the serial interface. It's impossible. That, that, that isn't us. Yeah, that's us. That's, um, that's been out for over 12 years, um, 14 to be exact. So back then, the serial interface wasn't even thought of. But so that's what it's next. It. But it still works on it. Well, let, me, single level Jason, let me tell you, Mr. Terry had the option because he had both types of equipment, the NetMaster and the Quantum Gold. So he had the option to go serial interface on his Quantum Gold. He chose not to, if I'm not mistaken, right, Bruce? That's and right, so right. You, you're using it just like you, you would use it with a NetMaster system where you have to match up the reader with the price. Right. Has that been a problem for you? No, because we did not want customers to have to learn two ways to use the system for warm and hot water, for example. Um, so we just left in place one system, and after a learning curve, then they're comfortable using any machine in the, in the store. And we thought that'd be a big hang-up from the very beginning, but from the very first time we did it, it's been the least of our problems. So, yeah. well, I think that was our introduction to you. I remember it was. We, we, were, we were at that, that uh, installed at the Sully Duck. And, and Michael and I, you know, my, my boss, Michael Shantz, who's here often, um, we talked about just the other day. He said, oh, I remember that first time, you know, we, we, we met Mike Davis in the store, and he hears about that up and up. And we're like, we thought that he was going to go right off the edge. And, you know, and, and he really, you know, he's like, this is not going to work. If you don't believe I'm here looking out for your best interest, listen to this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for real, like, we, were, we, 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 we were scared. Like, we were both like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, and, and it was you know, just, you have a lot of button, you match the price, and it's never been an issue. You know, is it? You got to realize that, that every time your customer coming in isn't the first time. It's learning to cover one time, show them how to do it, or they figure out how to do it on their own, and then the next time they don't, you know, they, they, they've got it. And of course, they just tell the other person. They, it's not like always an attendant has to tell somebody. Uh, you know, the laundry customers all know each other. You know, and they they help each other out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know that's one thing that. That I, you know, I wanted, you know, Bruce to talk about. You know, he's an unattended store, right? Right. So there have been some questions in here earlier about, you know, unattended and it's not going to work, and my customers won't get it, and you know, is that your experience? No. Um, we started out when we first put it in. We tried to spend uh, quite a few hours in there the first four weeks or so, and um, they're catching on. They tell each other how to use it, and we've seen a small but steady increase right. every month in how many, how many credit card sales we're doing. Right. And then that, that, that typical industry right? I mean, we, we, we can easily see, you know, um, a, a three-year swing for, for total <coughs> acceptance of this. It, it's really weird for people, you know, they've never seen a credit card reader on a washing machine, so don't expect for them to trust it right away. You know, they just, they may use it at McDonald's to buy it for a, a dollar coffee, but they see it on your machine and they're going to say, well, I'm not spending my dollar, I'm doing my laundry with a credit card. Why well, do you do everything else with it? After a while, they use it, someone else uses it. Next thing you know, they trust it and your numbers are going up and, and uh, it's just sort of getting past that, like, weirdness of it. And if any of you guys are near universities, you probably mentioned this, but yeah. it's a must because a must. I, when I went to school, we didn't have the luxury of credit cards and cash, but if you're... If your parents give you a credit card to use and you're at one of these universities and they give you so much cash, if you're going to do your laundry, 
Do you think they're going to take that cash to do your laundry? No. They're going to take that credit going out. They're going to swipe it. So university town is an absolute must for this type of system. Right. <laughs> That's another thing. We've been letting parents prepay on their mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. That way they know that their kids' laundry is going for their kids' laundry and not much for beer, you know. That, now, you, you may not even know that those cards can all be registered online. You go to spiderwash.com, every one of those cards, can be, can be, can, the number can be typed in and registered, and the parents can actually go in there and remotely load those cards with a credit card. Right. So, um, and then, then then we have a whole bar, you know, some marketing stuff that goes along with that. So if you want to put in different discounts, say, at twenty dollars, you want to give a five percent discount. At fifty dollars, you want to give a fifteen percent. At hundred dollars, you want to give twenty percent. Automatically, though, those kind of discounts will load onto their prepaid card. So it's really easy to do it too. I mean, there's only like three clicks of a button, so it's yeah. easy to explain to people how to go online, load it themselves. Good. Yeah. So, so I, I know that you need to roll along here with other Well, no. If you're, if you're, uh, are you finished? I, I can be finished if, you, if there's no more questions. I'll be in the back until about three o'clock. I can go outside if there's other things going on. Talk to people about it. Now, some of you have some more questions. One question. Sure. On the double drivers, you have to have separate. It's one per coin mechanism. And what we've been doing on that is we encourage usage on the machines that aren't getting used as much. So. We always want to put them on the biggest machines, of course, but you also want to put them on the machines that are, like I said, are being used less. So on a stack dryer, for example, we would ordinarily put it on the bottom bottom dryer, the bottom pocket, because obviously people come and they line up for the, the top pockets. It starts encouraging usage on the bottom dryer so it gets even wear on the machine and what have you. So that's one of the uh, benefits to it. Again. So one coin mechanism. One yes. coin mechanism. Well, the dryers we have, we have only one coin mechanism, but, but it's operated both sides. Right, so that would be probably, well, I won't mention brands, but we know the brands. So, so it's just one. You probably sell some right now. Yes, yeah. we can help you with that. These, these products are universal. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention is, even if you're not buying uh, new equipment, which usually is how we get it financed through the manufacturer or what have you, there's now a funding source for just the card system itself. Uh, so if you guys are just you know already have your long amount established, but don't have the, the and I'll, I'll give, tell you what the price is for a twenty, a starter kit is what we call it because we really don't like to use less than twenty in a store. It's thirteen thousand dollars plus installation, so you, it, it's scalable up from that. But the, the smallest we really want to uh, start off with is a twenty <coughs> unit set. That's thirteen grand. How much is installation? Installation about a thousand dollars depends on where you are. What was the thirteen grand again, model? For 20 units. Mark has more like 40, I believe. What's yeah. the term on the financing? Well, that's flexible. It depends on the rate you want. They can go real short term at a really low rate, or they can go three, <coughs> out to three to five years, I'm sure. with I don't know the exact rate, but I know it's very aggressive. Uh, we just talked about it the other day. It's really important for you guys to know that this isn't some flighty thing that's been you know put out and it's, it's going to go away. This This is here to stay. I mean... I mean, we got a couple calls in the beginning from you guys, and now every show is like busier and busier, and the clean show is like out of control. We can't even handle the match until they come through our booth. And, uh, you know, it was kind of funny when we first put our, our first system. I mean, I think that, where is Pat Reddington here? Do you remember when, 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 when I first put this out in, in car wash um, about 12 years ago? <coughs> I, I, I was the first person to ever introduce a, uh, a credit card reader on, on a self service, uh, you know, like, vacuum cleaner or self-service bay. I utilize Sedimac system. That's how, how I, I came to work for Sedimac. They bought my company out. Uh, you wash it was called. And I had that, that swiper in my booth and packing company goes, Jeff, what's this? No one's going to use a credit card in it. And I said, yeah, I said, but it can do it. I said, so I'm going to put it in and I'm going to try to you know do this. Well, and that's ridiculous. I mean, in a self-service car wash, you, you, you don't have a credit card reader in there and you're just not doing any business. You know, they're, they're at like 70% you know, credit card usage. This industry is no different. It's, it's going to change. You're going to have credit cards at some point in your laundromat. It's a yeah. huge competitive advantage if you don't have it. If you have it and the store down the street doesn't and you market it, it's a huge competitive advantage. That's why I'd want to be the first. I wouldn't want to be the last. Yes. What, what are the current swipe fees these credit card companies are charging? Well, all in is generally about 5%. I can give you the exact breakdown. <coughs> but once you put all the fees in, it's about 5%. <coughs> My credit card fees here, we do a couple hundred thousand dollars a month in credit cards, is three point something. So it's really not that, that high compared to uh, even a high volume 
processor. And, 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 and it's, it's something that I like to talk about so, so people understand why it's 5% as opposed to that, that 3 point, you know, 3.2, 3.45, wherever, depending on how big your ticket is, is that massive charging visa, when, when, they, when they assess credit card fees, it comes in two, in two proportions. It has a fixed fee, a fixed percentage rate, which is somewhere in the 2% range. And then they have, well, they, what, what, what they, they assess a, a, a charge of around 25 to 30 cents per transaction, so per transaction fee. That part there, if you take, say, 30 cents or 25 cents and assess that on a $10 charge, we have 2.5%. You assess that on a $100 part charge, that's 0.25%. So you take that 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 two point five or three percent plus your two percent percentage rate, add them together, and you got your five percent. So you understand that it's not like um, us or Standard or any other people are are you know, zapping a couple extra percentage points out of you. It's just math. And, it's in, all it and the reality is, even though you, you might see these advertised processor rates, if, if, if what ours is two point whatever percent, once you get the fees that you're referring to, and that's where that's all in. That's what I mean by all in. So that's that's not any, there's nothing on top of that. right. The, 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 there's no negotiating with mass charging visa. The race, the race, the race. He probably already mentioned this too, but what we've seen is that people who use the more expensive <laughs> wash, or most of the laundries right. we've built, all use variable pricing. We haven't built a laundry in probably 12 years that hasn't had a different price for hot, warm, and cold. Remember, when we did the very first one it was with Mr. Cherry, who's not here today, but we'll, we'll uh, mention him in just a few minutes. But me and Mr. Cherry were sitting there when we put this thing in and, and sat down and said, "Do you think this will work?" We said, "Well, we're going to find out." And ever since then, we have not done one store without that variable pricing. So when they use a credit card, when they use cash, they're, they're more tentative and more likely to use your cheapest wash. When they use credit card, they're more likely to use your more expensive wash. So that 5% is getting absorbed right there from the decision when they're making it up front. So it, well, that's, that's why I wanted to demonstrate to you that a quarter on a dryer is 17%. So we still have a positive cash flow of 12%. Uh, so it's... You know, and that happens a lot. And that's it's, it's pretty common. And remember, your five percent isn't on all your all the money's coming in. It's only in the credit card portion. Don't think you're losing five percent right. of all your revenue. That's people get that in their head. I can't lose five percent of my revenue. No, it's it's five percent of your credit card. So, it's always seemed to be a very discussed topic. Right. And <laughs> yes. I have one question: Which one of you is going to come home with me and take my mother's keys? From her. <laughs> Does she run your store? She collects. How's your mother's store? Is she driving, she driving a BMW? No. She's old school. That's funny. Uh, we're going to let that one sit. <laughs> Very busy for the next few days. <laughs> Any more questions? That was a good question. I'm not coming up again. It'd break her heart if I took her key, so I'd let, I'd let her steal a little bit, you know? <laughs> I understand. Okay. So no special for the day. Like yes. In, you get five free. Well, you get one free. That is the show special. You get one reader free, which is about a five hundred fifty dollars value. So if you buy twenty, you would get twenty one. Uh, so yes, there is a, a show special. So that is. Uh, I forgot to mention yeah. that. Okay. So one more thing. Uh, how old the How old the machines? Well, to give you an indication that my my store has some machines in it that are, were built in 1988. And those, those are, have mechanical slight slide operations on them. They're, they're Gen 4 Waskimats. And uh, I have them on those. I've, I've, we've gone way back beyond uh, Netmaster to much older Alliance products. It, let's put it this way. We've been making payment systems for over 50 years. We have an interface for every machine ever made. If, if you've got, you got a Greenwald... Uh, a turn knob meter on it. We got a replacement, you know, interface for that. All the other card manufacturers call us up whenever they want to interface to other machines because we can interface to every machine ever made. I don't care how old it is. And you know, and, and, and if and another thing is like you're saying, you know, you're not always going to buy new equipment, you know, to be washing dryers. But 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 a way to, to make a, maybe a less sizable investment and modernize your store is, is modernize it the way that people want to pay. You know, it's something they're going to notice. So so, so it's not a, you know having to do both at the same time. You know, we do want to see new equipment in our stores, but, you know, there's baby steps. <clears throat> and after you get the starter package, what I call it, with 20 units, you can buy them one by one. It just doesn't do you much good to buy them one by one to start with. It really is a, it's a negative versus a positive. But after you get 20, you can buy one at a time. So, very simple to add to it. Yeah. Can I get it for you first? <laughs> <laughs> sure, but it won't 
won't do you much good because it won't act, but the whole system won't work. The, the one thing, I don't know if he mentioned, but I noticed this because I go to New York City, I have some family up there and what have you, but I, first time I had seen that system and saw their reader, I got in one of the New York City taxi cabs, exact same reader that's in every single New York City taxi is on these machines. So obviously New York City did some research, they did some durability studies, and that's what they picked is this exact same reader because it's built for the future. The Google, I'm sure you mentioned the Google Wallet, the NFC technology. <coughs> there's a lot of other credit card systems, well, there's a few other credit card systems out there. They're still working to get mainly the MagStrike part of it done. They certainly don't have the uh, the technology built in for the next type of payment system. So even if they did, were able to you know do a good job with MagStrike, their technology can be outdated in no time. So it's it it really is changing. I mean, all you have to do is just type in NFC and, and, and to start to read about it. It's just, it's very exciting. Everyone had hoped that the new iPhone was going to have NFC on it, but they're not stupid. They know that when NFC really takes hold, what Apple does is then, now they put on NFC because everyone's like, i got to have a new one. So they're not dumb. They, they, they know exactly what they're doing. And uh, NFC is, and it's, and it's so much more too, you know, it's NFC allows phone to phone communication, switching over contacts, and there's a lot we can do. And we really dig into NFC and what it'll do for your laundromat when you know a few years down the road because we're cloud hosted. There's a lot, a lot that we can continue to provide for your store. It's not like it's going to end now when 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 there's promotions when 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 NFC is out fully with Google Wallet and you can then you just walk in your store and because they have their Google Maps and they know where you are, they pop a promotion up on your phone that says today 25% off your washers. It discounts that. You go up in your reader and you get your discount right away. That is, is, is the heart of Google Wallet or any of these mobile wallets. They want to be able to coupon for you on the fly. And that's the kind of stuff that happens. And that's that's in, in this kind of system that allows you to move forward with it as, as opposed to being stuck with a magnetic stripe. And that's tons of things. I mean, we're looking into ways of making uh, your, your watch drive fold that much better by using NFC. Or you can use a tablet and you can actually put a customer in as they come in and then put them down on the tablet and then put the tablet in front of the machine. And then that is tallying by each of your watch drive fold tickets. Or your usage can carry a Bluetooth um, receipt printer on your belt. You'll then print out the slip. I mean, those are things that we haven't developed, but that's the kind of thinking that we do all the time at SetMap. We always want to be looking at what's the next trend, what can we do to make your life better as a, as a laundry owner. You know, how do we justify that there's, that there's more than just credit cards here you know, at, at work? We try to build a lot more in because it, it, we need to build in value. So. That's exactly right. Those of you who've been here before, you might have heard me say this, but I tried to invent this technology before anybody had it because I knew they had. We had to have it. I was like, this is insane that this industry does not accept credit cards. So I have all these technology people that I know and do business with, and we really tried to to catch this before it uh, it came around, but it was so difficult to do. It really is. They finally came up with a. Uh, several people came up with it. I flew around the country looking at the first systems. First systems for the same amount of equipment. Are seven or still seventy thousand dollars, seven zero thousand uh, dollars. Incredible that you could think that that would uh, be a value. And again, those are just using MagStrike. Uh, so I kept trying and looking for systems, and finally found this one. I said, "Okay, these guys got the, the, the dog by the tail, so to speak." So I said, "We've been doing credit card systems for uh, I think about thirteen years now. The older stuff, everything was handheld. You see, the older stuff." didn't authorize. The, the internet, there wasn't enough infrastructure. You couldn't do dial out. You know, until there was a good, stable internet infrastructure where it was everywhere, it really wasn't feasible to do credit cards in any way that made sense. You know, so basically once we got, you know, good infrastructure, we're able to, we, you have to go out and authorize. Bottom line is, if you aren't authorizing, you're getting burned. Exactly. We're not repairing stuff on those things that. We take care of it. Now remember, each machine is separate. You're never going to lose, lose a whole bank of machines. Right, I'm just saying, say you got one to go down. I mean, it's as simple as you take four bolts off the back of the reader, you pull it off, we send you a new right. reader, you can put it on yourself, you connect the four bolts, you connect the wire, you're back in the business. The basically. Guy, you upgrade too, exactly. And, 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 and if, you, if you change out equipment, we don't build our stuff that this, this, this machine specific. Everything is relay operated. In other words, they just open and close the relay. If you, if you have serial, that's different, but as long as you're on a, on a different, on the same serial machine, you can move, move from machine to machine, so you're not you're not worried about you know. There was there's been a lot of card systems manufactured that were machine specific, and a lot of upset uh, operators when they couldn't use their, their old equipment. So we designed stuff that can be shifted from machine to machine, and we really don't have too many issues on on, on warranty stuff. No, um, it's like I said, these, these are in as many cabs for a reason. They're also on vending machines everywhere. This this is this is a big provider of uh, credit card technology. 
and it's really high-end stuff. We, we, don't, we did not mess around with any cheap mag stripe reader. One of the little readers, like some of our competitors use, are like $10. We're easily, you know, way, <laughs> we're 12, 13 times more expensive than that, you know, by a reader, you know, that we, that we use, so. We have a couple hundred readers out there. I think we've had two or three total that have ever gone bad, and literally it's a five minute swap as far as fixing it. The biggest, the only problem we've seen with the credit card system is the internet connection. If you don't have a strong internet connection, the system itself back here works fine. It's that internet connection that needs to be rock solid, and that's what I'm sure he said earlier, needs to be a DSL connection. Comcast is not recommended. Not that it won't work, but it goes through much suffering. We would prefer that you don't use uh, Comcast and we don't have all the problems. Because <laughs> that's my what's creating the problems. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a headache. Uh, go with DSL, zero problems. The problem is when, when, when you use a content provider like Comcast, <coughs> the problem is when, when people come home from work and they go on some, something, something like uh, a cable, or it actually draws down bandwidth. That does not happen with DSL. So. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Comcast is, is passing a lot of data, so and that's why we, uh, we deal with some difficulty to get to work. Most of it. <laughs> right. uh, is it possible with that internet connection for the, uh, the card readers to also supply uh, Wi-Fi to the customers with that interfere uh, with uh, the supply? Having, having it with the trains up and go, go ahead and supply Wi-Fi. Yeah. Every everything is in encrypted and, and everything is not <laughs> is not discoverable. But it's two separate Wi-Fi's, right? Or is it, is it one Wi-Fi? Like if you have a DSL, DSL system come yeah. in, and that'll control the credit card and provide the Wi-Fi? Yes. Wi yes. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. You, don't need to, you don't need to worry about people coming into your system and being on some data. You know, some areas, like some areas of Nashville, where they have a U-burst, they won't allow, they won't give you DSL because uh, the U-burst is a more advanced. <coughs> well, U-burst is very, I don't know, we haven't, I haven't personally, I use U-verse at my house, I'm, so I know exactly what it is, but I haven't heard about it or used it with a system yet. So we, we, we can send you a hub, plug it in, we'll put it on monitoring, and you see it. how it works. Because I, I think someone else was talking about that in here. Yeah, you can't get DSL. They, they, they offer U-verse in your home, and they won't give you DSL. Right. Well, I live in a building that you only have one choice, so, uh, <laughs> but it is U-verse. So we, we'd like to test that out or find out more about it. We, we can figure that out. We can find out. Is that, is that like uh, Verizon Fios? It's AT&T. AT so it's so AT&T's version. We, 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 I believe that is their high end. Yeah, I, I know it's their high speed. It is, yeah. 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 That, that's, we, we find that, that our Fios accounts that we have, when we have many, many of them, um, are the most stable of all of them. They're, they're, I mean, they're rock solid. They, they don't ever, never got, what, none's ever, ever gone down. I have a feeling Uverse will be fine because it's about speed and reliability, and that's what Uverse is, is all about, as far as I, what I know. So we, we'll look yeah. into it, yeah. I think that'll be just perfect, actually. We'll have to, we can verify that. Any more questions? That was a good one. It was. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know you got to head to the yeah. airport soon, yeah. so. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, Cinematic's been following us around for the last uh, week also, and uh, we've, uh, you know, had three really good open houses, and this really is one of the more talked about and discussed topics that we have at this time. I mean, it's uh, it is it's not.